Hey guys, this is Darwin from The Honeydew Carpenter and this is the first time you'll see him on our channel. We had a different video series we were trying to put together, but we've had such a cold influx of rain and we might get snow. It's really cold weather and so the project we were working on is not going to happen right now. We're going to go for a simpler one. Darwin knew we were freezing in our cabin so he came up with a great solution we're excited to show you because it's super cheap. Right? right? Super, super cheap? Super, super cheap. Okay. So I am, I'm still building a rocket mass heater for her cabin, but in the interim, I'm going to use a uh, Yukon stove. A Yukon stove is something that I became familiar with when I was in the military. I served in Alaska as an Arctic soldier, and we used Yukon stoves. I was able to source one through an army surplus a buddy of mine and uh, I've had it for like 15 years. So, this is it. This is a self-contained Yukon stove. I want to be, just give a good buffer of about 11, 12 inches from the wall. I think I might twist these and angle it up a little. I'm going to use my 10 snips, but just to get through this ribbed part, I'm going to use uh, a saw. Thank you, buddy. I thought I was going to do it at 13 inches, but I decided to open the window further, so i got to measure exactly how long I'm going to make the window. Three. Because every tiny house needs three stoves. Three stoves. <laughs> and, but they're not all as pretty as the first one. Well, I don't know. I actually think the mantle that he put together, is it the mantle? What's the thing underneath? I think the mantle. Is it the mantle? I don't know. I think it, it's actually kind of pretty. I, I like it because he did it with a little bit of a pattern. It's a cute little stove. It is. Hello. do is I'll need about that much to go up at an angle there and so I'll start flattening this out right here I need to go one more high so I'm not gonna pop rivet this on until I get the other one up Oh, okay. and I'm going to put a uh, I'm, I'm gonna put a little cap over the top to keep the rain out And right around that oh, pipe, wow. just beautiful. So I just flatten that. And, uh, this is a wood grip screw, but it had kind of a weenie little deal on it, so I'm going to do that. So 
So now I'm not going to tighten that totally until I, I'm going to put it right here on the seam. So when I pop rivet to it, I'm going into two things of sheet metal, into the elbow and the deal. That one I can tie. That looks awesome. And this one I can go tie. But you have to triangulate it. Yeah, the snowmobile we built was just a hobby. Really? He built it all from scratch. He like bent the metal and everything. Sheesh. Bought the engine and put it on and did like. Dude. Bent my own tunnel. You should have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and a couple women that just follow you around with a flashlight and a camera. <laughs> <laughs> just that much flame and it was enough to heat it to get it okay. blue in the right way. So you just like that. Yeah. Wow. But you don't want that. No. That is so cool and straightforward. Yeah. I love it. That blows my mind. I can't If it starts just getting too hot, here. you can check this. Warm. Oh, it's gonna this I knew this little Yukon stove would be plenty to heat it this is. all out. It like, is way. That is so exciting. So all told, you already own the stove, but all told, how much do you think the project, we still we had some tin, you already had fire bricks, but if somebody was paying for this project, right. stove, fire bricks, piece of metal, tube, how much do you think this project would have cost somebody? You'd probably be in the stove about $125. Okay. Um, you, you got one, two, three, four, probably five sections, sections of pipe would be another 30 bucks. So now you're somewhere between 150 and 170 bucks right in there. And then the fire bricks, you know, those are pretty cheap. I think you can get those for about 40, 50 cents a piece. Okay. Um, but you'd still be in them for like 25 bucks or so. Okay. And then, uh. What, the elbows, probably, you know, five, six bucks a piece, you know? But if you have a window to go out of and some corrugated steel to make it look cool like that. Yeah, yeah the reason I did it this way with this, I was thinking about it last night. You see how nice and sealed that is there? Yeah. You see the light coming up through there? Oh, between the ridges? Yeah. If you ever wanted to seal this off, all you'd have to do is run the bead right in there. Back. Okay. With the bead Okay. You see? Uh huh, no, I see it. This is the last section of pipe that's going on. We got her going last night, but um, it took a while to get it fluent because we didn't have quite enough uh, pipe put on, but it, we just ran out of daylight. I'm just gonna take a scrap piece from the uh, one I shortened. I'm just gonna pop rivet it over the top like that as a rain shield. That's it. Rain shield. Awesome. The one I found at Home Depot was $26. And I was like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm going to make one of those. Smoke coming out right now. We'll see how hot it is. Hey, kitty. You see how it got rolled over just a little bit? And that's common on stovepipes sometimes. I'm just going to... Fix it up. We're making hamburger vegetable soup, um, and I'm gonna try and get. I'm gonna try and get some biscuits made. I need to rehook the propane up uh, uh, to the other stove, but Melanie's little boys might not like the soup, so we're gonna try the biscuits. And I think Melanie will like the biscuits. They're gluten free, but they're really good. So.
whenever you're making a firewall, it always consists of a brick and an airspace okay. that is vented. Because if the brick starts getting so hot that it heats the air behind it, so you have to have it against an outside wall, okay. right? You can't do this in an interior room, right? Okay. It has to be against an outside wall. And then if those bricks do get to where they start heating this air, guess what they're gonna do? Because we have that air space. Air is gonna just start pulling up from the bottom and it's just gonna flew up and okay. there will never ever be stagnant hot air back there to the extent that it could ever start a fire. Okay. I got awesome. six. No way. There's no way. How do your little fingers hold on? Are you gonna drop them? I'll get out of your way. She didn't lift six. She oh did. my gosh. How do you even have room for your She's gonna now? try and do wow. something. Oh, She's not gonna be able to make it. <laughs> See, I stacked these, this one, uh -huh. like hay bales. Two this way, two this way, two okay. that way. So these that are just kind of stacked on top of each other yeah. can't fall over. Okay. So that's crazy. Yeah, I only put one potato in. Oh, no, that's garlic. Oh, garlic. Sorry. Okay. I know that my potatoes somewhat dissolved because I had it in long enough to cook the carrots and the potatoes cooked a little faster. So. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Mm-hmm. Best compliment ever. And I'm so glad the little boys are liking it. What do you think, Missy? Good lunch? Hey guys, so the little stove is great. We feel really warm. It's a great size for our house. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to cook on it, but we'll probably do some experimenting with it. But thank you to the Honeydew Carpenter and Melanie, the lovely wife, and the oh so patient children who have been here for two days now. Uh, we just feel really blessed to have such good friends. Here, I got you four. Can I break one? Mm -hmm. Broke it. Mm -hmm. Pacha, pacha. Mm -hmm. One more paper towel, babe. Mm -hmm. One more? Mm -hmm. Only one? I hope so. Wait, I already gave you two. Again, I give you two again. Two more. Uh, bigger? Well, I think it's better if it's directional towards the bottom of the flame. Hold your hair back again, both hands, and, and come from above and blow into the bottom. Him, you should be fine. I didn't. My legs would probably be it since he was so close to him. How close do you get? It <laughs> was about that far away. If you didn't touch him, you're fine. Okay. Can't believe you fell for that. And actually smelled. I could smell. Oh, you can smell him, but as long as you don't touch him, you're fine. Yeah. And make sure. Dude. 
did. I said don't move. I didn't move. <laughs> but we can't put this one in until we put the second no. pipe on, right? Put this one on. No. Like you can't rivet it here until you put the second pipe on that one, right? Because didn't you say you weren't going to attach yeah, it? Yeah, that's why I haven't put the rivets in. I was just okay. testing you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to put the rivets in. Okay. I'm glad you said something. Okay. <laughs> you know what? are tired. I don't. Yes, they are. The cold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> so there's a song about that. Huh? The cold never bothered me anyway. I think he just did a Disney, <laughs> Disney princess song. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you want me to spin and fight yeah, this song? And your blonde hair should now grow out very long. The cold never bothered me anyway. But I'm just saying that you want, like. I don't want to just grab it. Oh, look, it. you have a giant spider right there. Where? <gasps> oh, God. <gasps> it's a huge hobo. Who's the man here? I don't want to be the man this time. Hold on, let me find something pointy. Did you get it? Yeah, you just got oh, thank it. Thank you. Oh, I don't like them when they're that big. Oh, God. That was <sighs> Deep breath, deep breath. <laughs> if you only knew how much I hate them. Well.